Alright, so ImageLine has just released FL Studio 20.8. It does come with a few little bug fixes here and there, and even some new stock plugins for everyone who owns FL Studio. So with this new version being released, what exactly does that mean for us producers? Go and find out. All right, so I'm at imageline.com and I'm gonna be reading off a few of the key features here. I'm not gonna be going through every single one of them individually. I may just try and find some of the more important ones like the plugins and some of the really big quality of life improvements. But other than that, I'm going through here and skimming through all of the patch notes. All right, so right off the bat, we've got the main thing that I was excited about for this update. It's going to be the frequency splitter. But we would go into this a little bit later on in the video with how it would actually work with your production. This is a new stock plugin inside of FL Studio. Split and process audio into two or three bands using linear phase or low latency filters from minus six dB to 96 dB octave. Wow, that's a lot of dB. <laughs> We're gonna see exactly what that means once we dive into that a little bit later. Oh, okay, here, and then, and then here's an instrument tuner. So I'm not exactly sure what this is quite yet, but it sounds like it might be a way to really get the key of your sample, but we'll go through that a little bit later too, I guess. All right, so it looks right here, there's going to be a small update for the fruity parametric EQ2, which is already inside of FL Studio. It's been in there for a while now. There's a new frequency histogram display with linear phase mode with artifact free the high slew rate modulation capability. <laughs> band mute switches, solo bands, improved finite impulse response, or fur, fear, fur. Downsample, oh, there's a downsample filter. That's actually kind of nice. An updated UI. So this actually might make uh, the parametric EQ2 a little bit more professional. Because as good as it is as a stock plugin, it's a little bit bare bones. So this might actually give it a little bit more like variety. And here's for the Flex VST, which by the way, I do have a couple videos out on the Flex VST. If you wanna go check out the video, it should be right in the card right up there. All right, so a couple of small changes to the transistor base, the visual Visualizer, um, nothing really else too much there. All right, control surface patcher, yep, yep, yep. Merge automation clips, okay, this is actually gonna be very good for everyone's workflow. There are so many times where all I need to do is make a simple like two bar loop for an automation clip, and then I have to just have to copy and paste that all the way through, which is not that big of a deal, but now we can actually just put all this together and then make it all one big automation clip, which is it's a little bit more clean and neat. And then initialize controls right here, which is actually gonna be very important because it's very annoying when you wanna add like an automation clip for like the master volume, and then you realize that you don't want it, so you delete it, but it still ends up doing Doing that automation anyways. So here it sounds like you can actually get rid of that a lot easier. All right, and everything else here seems like it's going to be a little bit more just quality of life changes. The last thing that I do want to mention though, even though it is another quality of life improvement, is going to be the Edison denoise. Denoising inside of Edison is not exactly all that great. Uh, so it looks like they're trying to improve that a little bit more, which is going to be very nice. And there's a new smoothing control to make it a little bit more like natural. And that looks to be like all of the really big patch notes that we have here for the 20.8 release. All right, so now that we are back over here in FL Studio, I want to go and test out a few of these plugins. I'm just going to be going over to the melody loops that I've created before, and let's go and try and grab. Yeah, we're going to grab common right here, which by the way, all the melodies you get to sing right here are going to be inside of the next pack that I'm creating for you guys. All right, so first things first, I do want to check out what they did to the parametric EQ2. Here, it looks a little bit cleaner, but everything looks pretty much the same. Okay, this already looks a lot cleaner than before. So it seems like everything inside of here is pretty much the same. Now, I really have not dived that much into uh, phase modulation here, so I don't really know exactly what all this is, but I'm pretty sure that everything in here is new, I think. All right, so let me go ahead and disable some of this stuff right here so you can see what it really does, all right? So that gets rid of that. That's how it was before, that's all that we had before, but now this histogram, I think, is gonna help out a lot. And then here, getting rid of the old way and having just the histogram going on. Which I really do think that the uh, the heat map kind of lets you like show like where things are peaking. Like here, it's a lot of uh, information right here. So I think having both would actually be pretty beneficial. All right, I'm gonna go see this tuner over here. Okay, so yeah, it basically just checks to see. <laughs> this is actually so cool. So I already have another plugin for this uh, by the same guys that make the auto tune. It's called Auto Key. That does this exact same thing to where it'll listen to your sample and then it will give you sort of key and uh, I think that's it. Yeah, just the key. That way you have a little bit of a better idea of what your sample is going to be in. And here it says it's going to be in A sharp, which it you can see right here is in instead of A sharp. So I think so far it's doing pretty well. That is going to be really helpful though for a lot of people that really don't have an ear for finding a tune of a sample, which I honestly am not the best at. All right, and finally the moment that I have at least been waiting for this whole time, and that's going to be checking out this frequency splitter right here. Once again, I'm, I'm not really too familiar about uh, linear phasing, um, but I'm sure that you guys can tell me exactly what that is in the comments down below. Here we've got some presets. Let's see what this stuff does. They're cut out quite a bit of the low end, but it still sounds pretty natural. Oh, okay. So I wonder if we... I guess you could use some sort of automation for that if you want to try and just dip all that down just, just the low end, but it's a little bit much. It's a very small boost of the low end over there. 
A mastering curve, that's pretty neat. Go back to default and see if we can't do anything here for ourselves. So here's two bands and then three bands. Very easy to, to do over there. Oh, that's a lot easier. This kind of reminds me of something that Maximus does, actually. I right, so now that we've gone through all of that, the really cool thing I was really looking forward to is going to be these right here. So all these mixture channels I have set to automatically go all the way to my send routes over here. So if I put this on to number two, three, and four, here is my sample right there. And then it's only gonna be playing the frequencies that we have inside of here. That's really cool. So here, I think it's be really cool for uh, certain different things. Like if you want to add some distortion to just your low end, right? Let's go and try doing that. Make it sound a little bit more full. Yeah, that's really nice. And then this can make it actually EQing a lot easier too, I think. All right, so I usually use Bad Filter Pro Q3 for my EQ, but for just because this video is about the new updates, let's go and use Paramagic EQ too. I'm gonna do a high pass right there and we'll do an order of round like eight around like 30 hertz you want to add a little bit more like distortion yourself with the eq you can do something like this or like right there around 289 hertz right, it's gonna be super weird i don't know if it's gonna do anything but i'm gonna try adding a transient processor to just the mid-tones sure why not man all right you guys be the judge uh this is <laughs> this is the new sample with uh some boosted low end and some transient processor on the mid-tones but now i can mute all three of these and then this is the original sample right here I just think that the new version sounds way more full. I know all of my melody loops will always include these stems and the MIDI, but let's go and say, for example, that you have a sample that has some bass in it, but you wanna add some reverb. Now you shouldn't add reverb to bass, but what you can do with this new method is going to be just using these two right here. Like say, for example, the, uh, let's go say the mid-tones, we can add a little bit more pro R, right? Okay, and then add some delay for some reason to the, the high end. It actually does sound pretty good. That sounds pretty nice. Oh right, yeah, so here is everything that we have done uh, to this new sample just by using a couple of the new plugins. All right, that just sounds way, way, way more full. And honestly, would not even think about doing that if it wasn't for this plugin. So what I have to do before having this frequency splitter, we'll be going over to Patcher and then getting a few different instances of Maximus. I need to get three of these right here, right? And then you just plug in every single one of them right there. Then go into this one, solo just the highs, do it to every single one of them. And then from there, go add another plugin. So it's going to add some Pro R to the mid-tones, right? Connect those and then connect those again. And it's just it would just take so much longer. So this new method of using the frequency splitter is going to be a real time saver if you want to end up using this method. Method. I think it's all that I'm gonna have for you guys here today. I've got about a minute left before this camera turns off on me. So uh, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like down below. It helps me a lot. And subscribe for more future content. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.